is the CBS Evening News with Morton Dean. Good evening. In Rome, it was the first day after the big surprise, the surprise and swift choice of Cardinal Albino Luciani as the new leader of the Roman Catholic Church. The new pope chuckled and smiled as he said he never expected to be named pope, but gave the first hints about what kind of pope he expects to be. More from Bert Quint in Rome. For John Paul I, this was a day of commitment. On his first morning as leader of the Roman Catholic world, he pledged his church to the service of truth, of justice, and of peace, and to the working together of individuals and nations. His speech from the Sistine Chapel, as the conclave that elected him ended, was recorded and broadcast to the Romans, the pilgrims, and the tourists who strolled outside in the great square of St. Peter's Basilica. It was in Latin, and most of those who heard it, heard it only vaguely, without realizing who it was that was speaking or the significance of what was being said. But the cardinal seated before him could not help but be aware that here was an appeal to the humble and to the mighty to build a new order, more just and more sincere. We want to continue the implementation of the Second Vatican Council, he said. That is, the reforms of Pope John XXIII, whose desire it was to throw open the windows of the church and let in new air and light. We want, said Pope John Paul, to continue uniting the different churches within Christianity, without ceding on points of doctrine, but also without hesitation, and to continue a serene and constructive dialogue, even with those who do not share our faith. It was only after the doors which had sealed the cardinals in conclave were opened and the new pope walked toward an old papal appointment, the appointment of every Sunday noon at St. Peter's, that the world outside the conclave was to get a good long look at the new pope. Gazing down at hundreds of thousands in the square, blessing them and speaking without benefit of a prepared text, he spoke not in the way of a pontiff, but as one man to other men and women, openly, modestly. When I went into the Sistine Chapel to vote tranquilly for a pope, he confided, I couldn't imagine what was going to happen. He said two cardinals urged him to accept the papacy, one saying, take courage, the Lord gives you the burden, but also the strength to sustain it. The other reassuring him, don't be afraid. In the world, there are many people praying for the new pope. He also explained why he had taken the name John Paul. John, he said, made me a bishop, and the people in my Venice, the gondoliers, the nuns, everybody, remember him so well. And Pope Paul not only made me a cardinal, but there in Venice, in front of thousands, he once took off his cape and placed it on my shoulders. I never, he said, blushed so much in my life. I know, said John Paul, that I don't have the innate wisdom of John or the culture of Paul, yet here I am in their place. Bert Quint, CBS News, Vatican City. The meeting to choose the new pope was a secret meeting. That's a tradition. But the tradition cracked just a bit as the cardinals who picked the pope emerged from seclusion today. Jerry Bowen reports. The conclave barricades came down. The cardinals walked out with smiles. Aides carried their suitcases, and nuns in the courtyard rushed to kiss their hands. We prayed up a storm, said one American cardinal, but we were guided by the Holy Spirit. It was like a sauna in that chapel, said another, and it didn't help when the chimney backed up, giving us the smoke we were trying to get to you. At a news conference of the United States Cardinals, it was learned that there were four ballots and that Albino Luciani, Pope John Paul I, was the evident favorite at the outset. The Americans believe the pontiff will continue the policies of his two predecessors, unity of the Christian world and the updating of church law and Vatican government as called for by the Second Vatican Council, Hence, his surprising choice of two first names, John and Paul. I think the choice of a dual name shows a, an originality, a creativity. If you want almost a, I'm my own man, and at the same time, a continuity to the uh, programs, if you wish, of both uh, John and Paul. All of that seems to be 
encompassed in that unique choice of a double name. Other cardinals said they foresee no changes on some of the controversial issues facing the church. On celibacy of the clergy, I see no possibility of change. The ordination of women, the same way. These are basic doctrinal findings of the church, and this pope will not change them. And Cardinal John Carberry of St. Louis said the same goes for birth control. I can almost say to you positively no, because I think he stands on what Pope Paul VI said, and it would be the last thing in this whole wide world uh, that he would do. Some are not so sure. We are all conservative in one way, in the sense that we are in continuity with tradition, otherwise we shouldn't be Catholic. So we are rooted in the past and at the same time open to the future. The emerging picture of the new pontiff is that of a spiritual leader who is socially conscious but bound by church tradition. A man who may be willing to encourage change but not at the risk of breaking bonds with the past. He will, say most observers, simply try to live up to his chosen name, Pope John Paul I. Jerry Bowen, CBS News, Rome. In the past, when cardinals met to choose a new pope, there were complaints about the food. But today, Philadelphia's Cardinal Kroll absolved the cooks of any culinary sins by saying, at any college, it's fashionable to knock the food. I guess the College of Cardinals is no different, but I had no complaints. The formal installation of Pope John Paul I will be held next Sunday, and we'll have more about the new pope later in this broadcast.